Good Saturday morning, everybody. Well, it's cold today, big time, here in Bay Roberts, Newfoundland, Canada. So, I figured I'd come out and do a few little hobbles on the 5740 and uh, get it ready for a small contract that, uh, that it will be leaving on. So, uh, today what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be installing this uh, welling or welling uh, siren system. It's, uh, it's not being so much installed for the siren itself, it's being installed for the PA system because the tractor will be working in a, a very uh, noisy environment and also uh, I'll be hooking up uh, a portion of the siren to the main horn so uh, I'll, I'll give you a demo of it when it's done. So uh, this was purchased at uh, Strobes and More and uh, so was the uh, sound off signal speaker. So that will be mounted up in the front there now. It's, it's a good bit of weight there. And also, uh, the reason why this is being installed, of course, it was a prerequisite to the contract. It had to, had to be on the machine. Another thing that will be installing this morning will be the fire extinguisher. And as you can see by the design of the fire extinguisher, it only has one strap. And of course we all know that these machines can take a lot of bounce and a lot of beating and so what I'm going to do is I bought another strap like it and I'm going to uh, another mount so I'm going to take that strap off I'm going to mount it here on the bottom so it'll be secured in two places around here and around there and to uh, prevent the weather from deteriorating it I have a cover fire extinguisher cover to go over it so I'll probably be mounting it on the FEL uh, frame because the FEL stays with this tractor all the time. It's, it's not a farming tractor, so the FEL, I've only had it off once to do a bit of maintenance. So what I'm going to do is just mount it on the FEL frame. And how I'm going to mount that is uh, with the click bond system. So uh, anybody who haven't seen how the click bond system works, I have a video on our channel that... Uh, that demonstrates how it works so if you want to go into the uh, description of the video I'll have the link put there and that will bring you right to that particular uh, video so I'm going to continue on I have to move the headlight system a little bit remove the ear horn the existing ear horn sable ear horn that's there now and I'm going to uh, start the install so I'll come back uh, once or twice just to show you some progress and then uh, I'll show you how it all works. So uh, back shortly, guys. Oh, incidentally, uh, anybody who has to work on uh, the Grand L 40 series, you can uh, gain access to the battery quite easily by removing two wing nuts, uh, one wing nut on each side here, and pulling up on the headlight grill assembly and uh, you can actually pull it loose. Now I have a wiring system hooked up here so I'm not going to pull it right clear but you can actually see you can gain access to the battery quite easily so I just thought I'd add that as a little technical tip for you just in case you weren't uh, aware that that was a possibility. Okay so I just moved the grill just over to the side a little bit and as you can see, there's uh, lots of room there when you move the grill out of the way. If you want to, it's only a few minutes to take off the uh, air breather. And you're into a wide open space there. So I may have to make up a bracket to hold the uh, horn or the speaker. But uh, we'll see. Well, taking into consideration just how heavy the speaker is, I'm going to take its original mount and I'm going to adapt it to some 316 plate and by doing so it will allow me to raise the speaker up further past the battery and also clear up the air conditioning uh, lines so uh, I'm just going to use iron worker stamp them out, thread them then bolt them on once I get these brackets in place and I'm satisfied with the modification I'll just remove it and I'll put the uh, the raw metal into the bead blaster and I'll take the mill scale off it and I'll prime it then I'll paint it 
and while it's drying then I'll just go after the fire extinguisher install and that way I'm not losing any time it's it's kinda like multitasking but working more efficiently as well so that's what I that's my game plan anyway folks okay now this is the plate that's gonna hold the uh, speaker up on the back of the grill so what I'm gonna do it, it's it's about an inch away from the uh, radiators so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna punch some holes in it so uh, have a little bit better airflow I doubt it would make any difference but hey I got it here so it's just as well to punch them out I'm not gonna worry too much about the spacing or anything just as long as there's there's holes there so let's have a look see see if we can do it what it's going to look like. I'll do the other side as well. Like I said, I'm not too worried about the spacing. There you have it. Only took a few minutes to do it, and you know I don't know if it'll if it's necessary, but you know it'll make it look a little bit better and uh, also lighter, uh, still strong, yet uh, will still have airflow. Okay, let's have a look at the bracket. So what I did is I used. Let me see. I can do this. I used this existing bracket that was always on the tractor and you can see the one that I I made in behind it. I hope you can see the one I made in behind it. There you go. So that's there. So it was very strong but what I decided to do besides that I ended up making a support bracket right here and it goes from the existing hole on the, uh, the speaker to the existing hole on the main frame so what that does is makes it very much more rigid so I'm, uh, I'm satisfied with that um, the bolts that you see holding on the bracket down here if I can get you some more light that bracket that's all drilled and tapped into the mainframe uh, uh, metal there. So it's uh, when I do finally put it on there permanently, I'll put some blue Loctite on there just to keep it uh, snug. But I think that's uh, going to be sufficient for that speaker. I've already uh, tested for the uh, headlights and it fits perfect. There's plenty of room, so. Now I'm going to have this uh, set up in such a way that the siren or the horn can be used from the main horn on the uh, tractor, the one in the steering wheel. So unlike some tractors that has their horn button down on the dash, this one has it in the steering wheel like a car, a regular vehicle, which is kind of nice. It's a, 
kind of a touch of class, I think. So this is the relay that's going to run it. So basically, when I activate the siren, the relay is taking the heat, and the uh, the source wire is just going back to the horn button. So it, uh, it's looking good. So I'm going to take it all apart again. I'm going to bead blast the mill scale off that bracket. And of course, this one's already been done. I'm going to prime it. And I'm going to paint it uh, Kubota gray. And that way, when it goes back together, you'll hardly notice it. Okay, so this is the click bond system. So we're going to apply the uh, epoxy to it there now. And I'm going to peel off the uh, paper. And I'm going to see if I can zoom in there for you a bit, guys, so you can just see it a bit. So I got to try to set this up now where it's going to be dead on. clicks on there, you stick it on there, and then you push. And then, that's your click bond. So now I'm going to do the same thing, then I'll take the camera over, and I'll show you a, a close-up of it. Thanks to my buddy Mark for supplying this to me. It's after coming in quite handy. Uh, I didn't even know this stuff existed till I, I met Mark. With click bond. clean off a little bit of the, the mess that I made. Usually what I'll do is I'll just scuff it, guys, and scuff the paint, and then I can uh, wash it, clean it up in acetone, and even clean the little pads with acetone as well. And uh, that way it's clean. When you're using acetone, guys, make sure that you you use rubber gloves because it's really, really hard on the uh, on the hands and the central nervous system. So I'll take you over now and uh, show that up close to you, up, up close for you. Hang on a second. Okay. So basically, what you do is you stick it on. After you clean off this area a little bit with some sandpaper, rough it up a little bit. You clean it with acetone. You clean this pad with the acetone. And then these pads keep it in place till it dries. And the drying time depends on the temperature, the ambient air temperature. Here I'm going to give it about a half an hour, 45 minutes. And you push in on it and it stays in. I can even see that starting to change color now. When you know it's right, you'll, uh, see, you'll see it almost greenish. And, uh, and I'm telling you, like, it's got some hold. Now, if you wanted to really ensure that it had, you had something really heavy, you would literally take this down to the, the bare metal and of course then it won't it won't tear away from the bare metal the aircraft is, is kept in disguise with this click bond material and uh, all of these studs and the pad is all stainless steel too guys so it's a really good system I've used it in other places on the tractor as well now I'll just show you my painted brackets and there's the painted brackets so just got to let them dry for a while. I'm going to go get lunch. It's lunchtime. Well, here's a better view of the uh, bracket. And as you can see, it's, it's quite strong. And uh, I'm going to mount the uh, speaker to it now and put the existing bracket, the other bracket that I made, out this way. And the speaker install will be, uh, will be done. But you can see there's a uh, blue lock tight on each bolt. And uh, it's starting to look like something now. It's uh, it's definitely heavy duty, but that's the way it should be on a tractor. So there it is with the uh, other support bracket on it. And it's uh, primed and painted. So there is the, 
the speaker as it's gonna stay. Like I say, it's very, very strong. Okay, so I've decided where I'm gonna put the siren. And I'm gonna put it on that pillar on the right-hand side of the cab. But, I don't like seeing that, that beer aluminum. So what I might do is get Kathy out, take some measurements here, and do a custom decal, a printed decal to go on there, probably with the company logo or something on it, just to take away that that beer look. So uh, yeah, I think that's what I'll do. So I basically just hung the uh, the mic hook on the side of the, the machine itself, and it's bolted to the pillar post. Wires come through here, and I uh, put some uh, backing washers in there as well. So it's, uh, it's really strong. This is not really that heavy anyway, but uh, I gotta go get uh, Kathy out now and see if she can design something for that. I forgot to show you too what I got done inside the cab. As you can see, I got it pretty well tore up, <laughs> but it'll go back together. It's not the first time that's been apart. Anyway, you guys are gonna have to uh, probably going to notice you missed a few steps because it was a lot of work involved in that. You had to take the uh, pretty well half the cab apart and uh, run the wires out through and put them in the uh, wire loom such as this stuff and everything was heat shrinked and soldered or soldered and heat shrinked. Kathy did get the decal done, so I'll uh, come back and show you that. So I, the uh, speaker, all the wiring is all done now. I did a, uh, a test, it's all working perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew this up, then we'll uh, come back and uh, I'll show it to you. Well, I had to stop and clean up. Boy, the place was in some mess. Anyway, remember I told you about the click bond, how it'll turn green when it's cured? Well, there you go. So basically, you tear them off like that. So I gotta go look for my mount and see if the holes line up. If the holes don't line up, I'll have to just elongate them a bit, cut the studs off, and bolt her on. I cut those studs off because they can't stick out too far or the uh, fire extinguisher won't go on. basically take up the thickness of the, the, of the uh, holder. So, and I always put the nut on and that way it, uh, it cuts the thread when it comes off. But I guess everybody does that. I would think. So now we'll put a wee bit of blue Loctite on the uh, on the studs. Well, it's hard to believe it, but it's been an all-day job. I know I skipped a lot of steps on you, but to be honest with you, I wasn't intending on even doing a, a video, so I guess a little is better than none. That's the way I see it anyway. I guess it's uh, boring for some people to see this kind of stuff. But some other people seem to like it, so I try to accommodate everybody type of thing. I'll 
I'll tell you that the, that click bond is wicked, wicked stuff. Ah. It'll never come out of it. Never. You have trouble beating that off now with a sledgehammer. Well, actually, you'd, the only way you do is you tear off the paint. And if you had it adhered right to the steel, well, you'd probably do damage to the uh, loader trying to get stuff off. So you can see I put the extra bracket on the bottom just to uh, give it a little bit more support. Oh. There it is. There it is, and I can't be no tizzer. I tried to put it down a little bit low for the light. Now this here is uh, made for a five pound extinguisher, and that's a two and a half. I would have liked to put the five on it, but to tell you the truth, there wasn't much room. So I guess something is better than nothing. Well, that's the way I'm seeing it anyway. It's like a sock too big, but you know, it keeps the weather off the, uh, the extinguisher, so. So we're all in code. So that's the alarm, that's the siren, that's the horn, that's the PA system, that's the fire hydrant, the backup alarm. Yeah, so we're all in code now. It's safe to go on the project. So you guys, this is the uh, this is the clip that comes with the click click bond, and your little disc is in here with your stud coming out through. Then when you stick this onto the metal, and you put your epoxy on, you just take it and push it up, and this plastic piece keeps it up against the metal, and when it adheres and dries, you just take that and just discard it and just throw it away. Little bunny was back. I just gave him some uh, some carrots. He's the little fella, that one. But I think they're tame because they come running after me and Kathy. Boy, does he ever love carrot. We bought him some hay yesterday, but he wouldn't eat it. But he certainly likes his carrot. Poor little fella. I can't believe anybody would abandon it if they had it for a pet. But he's street smart because dogs came around the other day and he took it off like a scald cat. But he's, uh, he's certainly hanging around with him and his older brother or whatever he is. Anyway, back to work. Okay, let's summarize here. Show you what we got done here. I can tell you one thing. It took all day to do it. So, the cab is clean again. I had to wipe down the mat because it's getting in and out. There's the decal that, uh, that Kathy done for the bottom of the radio or the bottom of the siren. So that covers up the aluminum, the bare aluminum, which is basically the bottom of the radio. So it's out of the way there. It's pretty good. Now we'll uh, get up aboard. Hang on now, put this light back. We'll get up in the tractor and I'll show you how it works. We'll turn our key to the on position. Now we'll go over here. You can see it's backlit as well. Let me turn off the light in here. There you go. So you can see it's backlit. Now the regular horn now is uh, is gone from the tractor and it's running off the siren. So this is basically how it works. Or I can change it and go this way. Or 
of course, you can go the other way. Or this way. Or... But I think what I'll do is I'll leave it on this. And it's up to them what they want to use. So... And of course, you can still use the override buttons here. Off and on switches here. And uh, volume for the PA. Testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three. And of course, there's a volume there for that as well. So I figured I'd put the thing for the mic there to the hang her. And uh, yeah, so that's it. Of course, once the key is off, everything is off. That's the stereo, guys. Just cycling off. Turn our cab light back on, and I shall get down off the machine. Yeah, so uh, it's all done. there you have it guys that's a take I started at 10 o'clock this morning I took an hour break and it's quarter to six in the evening but I did the fire height or fire extinguisher and I also did you know I did it right in my opinion everything is uh, heat shrinked and soldered and you know put in a wire loom it's all you know put in a harness it's all uh, electrical tie wrapped up and there's no there's nothing it can touch or you know if it passed through the cab or, uh, there's a grommet there hang on a second guys it turns off the compressor yeah so you know it's like I always say on, on the forums you know excellence is not a skill it's an attitude so you know if you take your time and you do it you know you take your time you think things out you, you try to do it the best of your abilities nine chances out of ten you're going to have a successful uh, job so and I think this is the case so it's, it's basically ready so in another three weeks it's gone for a couple of weeks and uh, the operator I know quite well so but now it's up to the codes that they need it for the contract so I'll tell you if they don't hear it coming they shouldn't be working they must be deaf but it, it, this is going into a noisy environment all the same so I would have liked to add more to the video on how I did things but you know you got the gist of it I wasn't even going to do a video today so I just stuck the camera on the tripod and got you a little bit of footage when I could so that's it folks it's Saturday evening I hope you enjoy your your evening with your family and your friends and take care don't drink and drive be good to each other and uh, we'll see you in the next video God bless <laughs>